Hello, my name is Mamax. In the last episode, we got everything ready, so we can now actually go and assemble the Y axis. So, for this episode, you're going to need your Y motor holder, you're going to need four of those bar clamps, those are the small ones. There are those big ones, and there are the small ones, so you're going to need the four small ones. You're going to need one of your motors, you're going to need a pulley, you're going to need your Y motor holder, and you're going to need everything we had in the last episode, including our Y carriage with our cardboard, our heated print bed, uh, the Y idler, and so on and so forth. And you're going to need your base plate. So first things first, let's make sure our motor actually is a pulley, so it can actually be used to... Well, pull something. So here's how you attach a pulley. That's a metal pulley, you can just glue it in place. But if you have one of those plastic pulleys, what you do is you just take an M3 nut and you put it in here, this little trap. And you put the M3 nut in there. Then you just slid this on top of your motor. It's going to take a little bit of force, but you can do it. All right. Uh, you want to slide it on all the way and then you just have to screw a little grub screw into this hole right here and the grub screw is going to fix this pulley in place so that's how you attach a pulley it's really simple once you did that just take your Y motor with a pulley and put it into your Y motor holder important the cables, right, they have to exit to one of those sides. They cannot exit to the top, they cannot exit to the bottom, otherwise you will not be able to mount the motor. They have to exit to one of the sides, okay? So assemble the motor like this in your wire motor holder. It's just four screws. I'm pretty sure you're able to put it in. That's again a screw, star washer, washer, and then you just screw it in. You have to use your shorter screws for this because there are blind screws going into the motor. So assemble your motor like this, pause the video right now, and resume when you're ready. Alright, so the next thing you do is you need to prepare those bar clamps. They are actually pretty tricky to do because they have a nut trap at the inside. You can see it blinking there, that's a nylock nut in the inside. So again, what you need to do is you're going to you're going to take a long screw, you're going to take a nylock nut. And then you're going to do just screw the screw onto the nylock nut and pull it into the nut trap in here. Unfortunately, I cannot show you because um, I'm actually not able to get the nuts out of here again. <laughs> but you pull the nuts in here with a long screw, like I showed you in the last episode. And that's basically it, then you're done. Uh, the screws, again, are screw, star washer, washer, and then you just screw them in. The star washer is there so they don't get loose, uh, because this is a part that actually vibrates, and every part that vibrates needs a star washer. So that's basically it. Alright, so what we do next is we're actually going to screw all of the stuff to the base plate. So, let's actually start with our Y motor, because why not? You have to locate four holes that are pretty close together like this. That is where your motor comes. And now, you're going to take your wood screws. I'm using those, those are actually really bad because they have uh, those hats that sink into the wood. You actually don't want that. But again, you're going to do star washer, M4 washer, and then you're just going to screw it in here. Pretty easy. And it's easier when you just put all the screws in here to begin with. Then it's easier to screw it in. Once you screwed your motor in place, you're going to have to locate the one of those bar clamps that's different than the others. It has this little uh, this little arm, that's where the end stop comes. That's the one that comes right next to the motor. And the arm with the end stop holder uh, faces away from the motor, because the switch will be right on here, and the Y carriage will go like this. Okay, so the Y carriage will make contact with this. So that goes here, and all the others Basically, just go to the only holes they fit on. And the opening comes to the middle. Right? So you just put them all in place. Should look something like this. It doesn't all fit on my camera, unfortunately. 
just put it in here like this and you're going to screw it in place but do not completely screw it in place right those holes are also elongated so they should be able to move a little bit left and right you just screw them so they don't fall off basically again screw star washer washer and gently screw them in place right pause the video right now and resume when you're done all right, so once you're done, you should still be able to move those around a little bit. All four of those. What we do now is we get our smooth rods out and we just gently push the smooth rods in here, but we do not push them in the here the whole way. Only a little bit like this. Because we have to be able to actually get the carriage on here. Okay, so if you put them in like this, you can now get the carriage in here. Uh, the carriage has one side where you have two holders and it has one side where it has one holder. You see, if you actually look on your base plate, you, you have on one side two of those bar clamps that are really close together. That's where the one holder goes, okay? So it goes like this. So really gently put it, really gently push it through there. And while doing that, make sure that you push the rod through there through the uh, linear bearing really gently because it's really easy to actually destroy the bearing if you not put the rod through there straight. Let's actually remove this for a second because it messes with the camera. Okay, so now it's already in one of those smooth rods and one of those linear bearings. And now we're just going to, this comes here. So, other side, again, be gentle. All right, so once it's in all the four bar clamps. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually fasten all those bar clamps. So first of all, you're going to move the, uh, the white carriage so far back that you can just reach this. And you're going to screw this in. So it doesn't move around anymore. Then you're going to move it even farther so you can just screw this in and then you fix it. And we do the same over here. All right. And that should already make it really straight. Cool. Last thing we need to do is we actually need to make sure that the linear bearing holders are screwed in all the way. What's really helpful is to use one of those and just put it around the the nylock nut from the bottom and then you can screw in you can screw them in pretty easily once you make sure that all those screws here are uh, tight you're going to remove one of the smooth rods again the short one and then you can just kind of uh, open this up because now we actually have to make sure that the belt is the right length so this hole right here is where the idler goes. So we're going to, again, gently screw this in place. It should still be able to move. And the way we do this is, you see that the idler has a really, really, really elongated hole. It's really long. So what we're going to do is we want to screw this in place at the farthest possible point so that we can still pull this to us to uh, make sure that the belt is nice. Uh, it's, it's tensioned a little bit. So you just screw it in a little bit, then push it forward as far as possible, and then screw it a little bit harder. So now, you just wrap this around here. This is not about being super perfect, okay? It's just about actually getting a feel about how long the belt has to be. So. Those two screws right here, we're going to loosen them up a little bit so we can move the belt. Okay, I can move the belt now. So I'm just going to pull on the belt. I'm going to pull it over and I'm going to pull on the belt until this is tensioned, okay? And then I'm going to... Okay, once this is tensioned, I'm just going to unscrew the idler again. And I hold the belt in place. 
All right, I hold the belt in place and then I flip it over again. And this is where we just screw this in place again. Because now we know this is actually the right length. All right, so let me quickly recap what we did. So we screwed this in place, right, as far as possible point. And then we just flip it over and we tension the belt. We release this and then we finish screwing this in place. So now, I flip this over again. And when we tension it, yeah, it's nice and tensioned and there is still like two millimeters to go to tension it further if we have to. But for now, we're actually not going to put it into place because now we actually have to attach our ribbon cable and that's a little bit tricky as well. So put the eyelet to the side for the moment. What we're going to do now is we're going to attach the cardboard. Just put it on top of here. You can, if you want, um, glue it in place, but I don't actually believe that you need to. So just put it on there. Now we need a couple of M3 nuts. Just put it on top here. That's just to hold the print bed in place. So nut and washer, all the four screws. This is obviously different when you use M3 pillars, like in the bill of materials. With the M3 pillars you screw in from the top. I personally like this one more because it's easier to make sure the print bed is level. Now we're going to take this. This is our clamp for the ribbon cable. So this part comes up here, the part with the bridge on top comes up here, and the other part comes up from the bottom basically. Okay, so again we flip it over, and we put that in here already, just so it's in place and it doesn't go anywhere. And then we really gently screw it in place, like one revolution. Just so that it doesn't fall off. Okay, so that won't fall off. Okay, now comes the part that's a little bit tricky. So, we take our print bed like this. Ribbon cable, this direction, the same direction, this is in. Okay? And then we take the ribbon cable and make sure it's not, it doesn't twist or anything. So we do this all the way to the end. And I actually forgotten that I already attached, <laughs> that I already attached connectors to it. So I unfortunately have to remove this again. If you have not attached connectors to your ribbon cable yet, you can just uh, push it through here. So it's going to be a little bit easier for you. Okay, so. Just lay this across like this. Okay, put your heated bed on top of it. And try to make sure that your cables are in this slit in your cardboard. Okay. So. Now. We can attach this again. All right, so cool. So now everything's in place. Uh, the ribbon cable goes through my little holder here. I'm just going to really quickly add a couple nuts so that the printed bed doesn't move. Okay, two is enough. Now we can turn it over again. And now what you want to do is you want this to be like this, okay? You want it to be really tight around this piece of wood. Again, I have to remove this, unfortunately, because I already have a couple connectors on my ribbon cable. So it's going to be like this. Okay. 
and we gently screw it in place. Again, not so that it's absolutely tight, just so that it doesn't fall apart. That's basically what we want to do right now. Alright. Because there's one last thing missing, and that's our polypropylene uh, sheet. Okay, this polypropylene sheet comes around our room cable like this. So you take this, okay, and you put it into your rim cable holder like this. And then you screw this in all the way. All right. So it should look like this, okay? This should be in the inside and this will wrap around it like this. All right, so final step is to get our last 26 uh, clamp like this. They have all a different width. So the widest are for the print bed. And you see those two holes right here. That's where, that, where this goes. So this is supposed to be on top of it like this. Okay. So we're going to flip it over. We're going to push it away from us. And what you have to do then is you have to push this in, right? So again, you flip it over, you push it away from you, and then you push both of those things in. All right. And then you put it on top of it and screw it in with your wood screws. Okay, like this. And now, finally, we can put our smooth rod in again. And what you should do now is you should look underneath your print bed. You should move your print bag back and forth and you should make sure that the ribbon cable rolls on and off nicely. So it should look something like this, okay? It should roll like this. I obviously cannot show you, but make sure that it works really nicely and that the polypropylene film has perfect contact with it. If it doesn't, you have to, uh, you have to adjust the polypropylene film here. All right, cool. So there's only one last thing we have to do to actually finish the y-axis, and that is to make sure that this belt actually wraps around our motor. Okay. Then you manually move your motor away from you to make sure it is wrapped around tightly, and then you screw in your idler. So you should pull on your idler with some force, right? This should be nice and tensioned. And that's it. That's your Y-axis done. My name is Matt Mac. Thanks for watching this episode. And see you in the next.